on that. Hmm? Okay. I did, but you talked over the tag. Oh, God. That means we're no longer friends. <laughs> um, the, the Irish starlet who went to Hollywood and slept with a writer, Michael. Yeah. Uh -huh. ah, that's it. That's it, you see. That's a joke. That's it. Right. It's an industry right. joke. Right. Yeah, it's not a very good one. Oh, no. And, and I, I can't finish on a low note, so what I'm going to do is introduce Party Parslow's mother. You'll have Ooh. to, yeah, Party Parslow, <laughs> my offside of the big Irish buffhead, has, has an equally Irish mother, although she's not nearly as buffheaded, and she sings beautifully, she sings like an angel, so you'll have to go and I'll put her on to sing us up to the news. I'm sure she's enjoyed the joke. I'm sure she'll be fantastic, and she'll probably have enjoyed the joke more than you, she being in possession of a sophisticated sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, goodbye to you, Michael. Goodbye to you tomorrow. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to you, me boy. Thanks, and talk to you on Friday. Now, here she is. Uh, uh, have you had your nervous cigarette, my love? Oh, hello, Doug. Yes, yes. Top uh, of the morning. No, it wasn't a nervous one. It wasn't? No, no, it was quite enjoyable. Just the obligatory <laughs> first. <laughs> so it's top of the morning, you and happy St. Patrick's Day. Your son's here drinking Guinness and eating oysters. I, I am, am not indeed. You know that. No, yes, he is. I am. Oh, you are? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the car, by the way. Oh, yes, okay. Well, well, we've got it back. Oh, good. Oh, it wasn't <laughs> stolen, was it? No, 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 I just left it somewhere. You just forgot where you left it again. Yeah. I thought yeah. there was chickens in the back. <laughs> <laughs> now, darling, you remember the song you sang for us on Mother's Day? Oh, that rude song. It was a rude song. Can you give us just a couple of verses? Because we're just about out of time, but I'd love to hear you sing again. You're such a wonderful chanteuse. Oh, that's me. Come on, a couple of bars. Okay, then. It's called Falurum. Falurum, that's okay. it. Okay. An old man came courting me, hating and durum da. An old man came courting me, me being young. An old man came courting, he said that he'd marry me, mate, when you're young. Never wed an old man, because he's got no falurum da, little iurum da. He's got no falurum da, little iurum da. Because he's got no falurum, da little iurum da. He's got no falurum, da little i. He yes. When he went to sleep, hating and durum da. Oh, all right, one more, one more. When he went to sleep, me being young. When he went to sleep out of bed, I did creep into the arms of a handsome young man. And I found his falurum, da little I I found his falurum, da little I I found his falurum, he found my dinger, and so made when you're young, never wear an old man. Thank you, Carmo. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, I, I speak no Gaelic, but I have a really strong concept of falurum and dingle durum. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for your time, and thanks for doing that for us, Carmel. Okay, I'm hustled. We've hustled their ass quite a bit, haven't we? Mm. We've looked after Sonia Dada, and why not? What a talented bunch of chaps. And they smell better than party past, though. So said Sue Moses, who's with us. Too bad this morning, Doug. Oh, well, you're obviously upwind. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Personal hygiene is so important, isn't it, when you work in a small studio? A large group of people in a small studio demands personal hygiene. You're, of course, um, fastidious in your personal habits. Sue, you always come in looking well scrubbed. Combs the underwear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah. Now, that's, that's right. I was going on to something ugly, but I decided to leave it alone because Reggae's uh, on the line and we'll do it to him instead. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry. He used to be straight. <laughs> he used to be straight. All right, all right, all right. We might play that for you this morning. No. <laughs> All right, well, right. Stop deviating from the playlist. <laughs> Speaking of deviation, where is um, where is that truck now? Actually, the truck didn't fall off the back of it. Uh, the house. house, actually, yet. Yeah, <laughs> Nor did the house fall off the back of the truck. Yes, right. Okay, we've got that. What a good time of day to move a house up the Pacific <laughs> Highway. Mm. I believe you're moving a house. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't these people think? Yeah. Why is it going to the ambulance? Yeah. Well, apparently, it's sort of like a, a lot of room there, so they can park it there until all the all the hassles, all the traffic, all the traffic hey, flows hey, hey. east and... Do you mind having this conversation on your time? I'm playing it rather dull. <laughs> and now it's ten to seven. <laughs> and I'll try and tell you the singing time call is dead, you know that? That was unreal. <laughs> you, you would probably be too young to remember the singing time call. Tell me so. Yes, yes, they used to do it on 2UE, I can remember. They also had funny little poetic ones. Are you there, Reggae? I am. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I can remember one that went, My boyfriend Kevin since half past seven. 
<laughs> Who sang it, Elton? Oh, don't. You made it sound like that. Did I sound like Elton? No, well, I was just thinking of reggae's friends. And... Oh, here we go. Hey, 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 don't be like that because Elton's doing a great thing. I know. Uh, tonight he's doing the, uh, the AIDS benefit concert, and I think that that is fantastic. They reckon that they'll raise $500,000 or more as a result of Elton's generosity, and I won't have you speak. I wasn't being Elton rude. I was being smart. And I'm sorry, and I'll slap myself. You were being smart. I didn't mean smart as an in intelligence. <laughs> I was being a smart... Well, just remember this, Sam Power. Oh, I will. No one likes a clever dick. I know. Especially a chubby clever dick. <laughs> you there, Reggae? Yeah, I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> oh, good. Well, just tell us about the surf. Get on with it. Oh, good, OK. Well, we've got... Oh, no, 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 no. The okay. wine's just fermenting, I'm... and he's giggling. Just okay. go about your business. OK. I have... I want to be straight here, you know. I don't, I don't care. You don't you? No. It's very good. <laughs> Given your remark of yesterday, you, yes. do you remember your remark I of yesterday? Do, I do. Uh, it was something like this. Yeah, oh. I used to be straight, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I meant, you know what I meant. Yeah. Clean cut. <laughs> well, I'm going to play Eric Clapton instead. I'll let you off the hook. Thank you. I'll play it for you next time. Oh, great. <laughs> Eight to seven now. Bye, Reggae. Bye-bye. Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for that lovely song. Tears in heaven. Sad, uh, but beautiful. Je suis très triste ce matin après cette chanson. Pourquoi, Dad? Pourquoi? Because I'm just a gooey cake, really. Just a, a sponge bun. Three minutes to seven is the time. Shortly, Weird Al Zola with Triple M News and Nympho. And then, of course, at 7.50, we will do Doug's Big Ring. Not the old Big Ring where we hit the mobile phone, but the all new improved big ring with enzymes where we dip into the box actually we don't fifi dips into the box well i shouldn't say that it's not very glamorous <laughs> into the into the barrel finely honed aluminium barrel carved from a single block of aluminium by latvian nuns on holidays oh, yes <laughs> in bikinis <laughs> uh, yes uh, with their teeth no what happens is we draw one of your entries out and uh, ring you. If you know the password, then we give you the $1,000 of Telecom Mobile Nets money. Our fax number, if you would like to be a part of Doug's Big Ring, and I mean that the nicest possible way, 369-1626, 369-1626. If you don't have access to a fax, uh, then our postal address, a letter will do, uh, GPO Box 442, Sydney 2001. GPO Box 442, Sydney 2001. Doug's Big Ring. We need the telephone number. Um, on which you will be available at around about 10 to 8 each and every morning. We've got uh, a bunch of, of entries, haven't oh, we? Yeah. Mm. So many people would like to win $1,000. Mm. <laughs> Super! I could use $1,000. It would help me pay for yesterday's lunch. Hey, you! Do every one of us has a story we can't explain. It's that each night on Channel 7 The Extraordinary, the end zone Uncle Doug talks about the night he saw a ghost. It was there and it was real. An encounter with the supernatural or something else. And it confounds everything, I believe. In degrees. Hey, yeah, listen. Yeah, uh, yeah, what? What? Uh-oh. <laughs> Thank heavens, this isn't television. Yeah. 7.06, this half hour, we'll talk to the poor man, who we believe is back in the safety of his home after being surrounded by street people when he filed his report from a Hollywood telephone booth on Tuesday. And again, he does belong in the gutter. Hey, <laughs> Doug, yeah? hey, today, it is a treat for you because my entire report is sex, sex, and more sex. It's about the sexual plumbing of your favorite stars. Oh. Annie Lennox, who's she been hanging with? The Prince Zoo moves to San Francisco. Also, Stephen Jouwa from Family Matters. Does he like men? And last but not least, the Fresh Prince with more fresh prostitutes. As you know, Doug, I give you sex. Man's an animal. 707. People every day. Arrested development. Poor man, arrested development. Great piece of juxtaposition there. To 11 minutes after 7. At Triple M, the following, ladies and gentlemen, is a political announcement They're written and spoken by Sam Power and Doug Mulray for the next best party to the Leonard Teal party. Six! Count them six! Good reasons to vote a... Check in! Into Parliament. One. Check in! Two for lost bicycles. Two. Their defence policy. 
policy is running around in circles walking, which is better than our current policy. Three. Chicken disagree with GSP. Four. No chicken has ever gone to prison for corruption. Five. Clucking makes more sense than political jargon. And six. If they break a promise, you can eat them. With a glass of champagne. Might be my birthday. Silly. 7-12. Because the tenders back on the chain gang for everybody driving into work, even as we speak. 7-15, the drama behind the microphone. Sammy's having a crisis. <laughs> oh, 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 why can't anything be a secret? Because we're not like that. This is Radio Real. Warts and all wireless. We tell the folks what's going on. You're, you're sad, aren't you? We've upset you by doing fat jokes, and I want to promise you that we will never do another one. But you can't. <laughs> I beg your pardon, what did you call me? <laughs> Doug's Big Ring, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fantastic contest. We uh, invite you to fax us on 369-1626 with your phone number, your name and phone number, or to write to us, GPO Box 442, Sydney 2001. Our postal address. You send us your name and the phone number on which you'll be available daily at 10 to 8. Then we, uh, we ring your phone number, and if you know the day's password, you win $1,000. The first thing you must say when you answer the phone is the password. Today's is, this is the last day of party's life. <laughs> no, 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 don't confuse the audience. Sorry. Today's is, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga chaka. Oh, lucky we're not Ugachaka. confusing the audience. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka. No, the idea is that somebody will answer the phone in Doug's big ring and say, ooga chaka. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka. I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me. That's the idea. They will say ooga chaka and we will sing the song over them saying ooga chaka. Isn't that a terrific idea? Aren't we a bunch of wacky funsters? Smut, filth, and garbage. To some people, these are more than just three good things. For some folks, it's an entire way of life. And as to these people, the everyday dirt ball, the bit is dedicated. To those of you unaccustomed to life in the gutter, you'd best grab a snorkel, because we're going down. Going down easy, going down slow with the poor man. Poor man to the white courtesy phone, please, at 7.20. Good morning. Yes, today's report is going to be especially smutty. I give a warning to people with weak ears or queasy stomachs. They may want to tune out right now. Oh, dear, I'm panicking. <laughs> I've got the hippie, hippie shake. <laughs> right, listen, it, we're, it's all about sex, every one of my stories today, Doug, and about strange sexual plumbing, and we'll start out with Annie Lennox. Mm. Anyway, Annie, who was a, one time married to Dave Stewart when she was with Eurythmics, mm -hmm. apparently was seen last week in a club in San Jose, California, leading a very alternative lifestyle. She has cut her hair short again, so she looks like a man. She was also dressed in a suit, <laughs> tie, and on her arm, huggy, huggy, kissy, kissy, in the back of a club at an intimate table was a tall, thin woman. Well, there you go. There's a little bit of smut on uh, Annie Lennox. I don't think she was actually ever married to David Stewart, yeah. was she? I, I, I don't know. Was she not? But I know that no. they were together, though, wasn't she? She lived with him, I think. And then left right. him. And then she left him for a member of the Hare Krishnas or something. <laughs> anyway. And now she's with women. It now doesn't surprise me. I mean, just look at her. You would think she probably loves all. Maybe and she's just had a baby, I heard, too. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a lovely environment to bring up a child in, huh? <laughs> Her second child. Look, I don't know. It's your gossip. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Listen, the Prince Zoo is on the move again. The traveling zoo of Prince has landed in San Francisco. He's taken over another top floor of a, of a famous hotel in San Francisco. Now, this is really interesting. Apparently, the animals are with him again. This time, he has brought with him a couple of doves, a couple of doves, excuse me, and also a couple of tiny gerbils and field mice in cages, in two different cages, a mini guinea pig or a huge rat, we're not sure, and the chipmunk. And as you know, chipmunks like to whittle and bite on wood. But uh, these animals are delivered, we found out more information about that, by women and men dressed in black outfits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to draw any conclusions, or are we just going to leave it at that? I think we should. 
should. Uh, that, that's kind of a zoo. I wouldn't mind paying the admission to see if I'm going to take Okay. Okay. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air apparently has been seen with some fresh hookers again. Uh, he was stopping recently near the Los Angeles airport in his limo, and actually women who were hanging out on the streets were jumping into the limousine with him. And last but not least, you know the show Family Matters in Australia? Yeah. Well, Stephen Joie, who I guess plays uh, Steve Urkel on the show, apparently he's very anti-gay, Doug, just always commenting on, on how it's not good and it's a family show that he's on. Mm. Well, he has been seen recently many times in the company of another young black man and was seen in the bathroom of a very famous concert area in Los Angeles embracing and apparently very affected in the bathroom uh -huh. with a certain young gentleman that he's been in the company in. There's a lot of media and people in the Pardon me? Never mind. <laughs> Dude, that's all my stories for today. You've got to admit, they're very wonderful, very wholesome. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's really terrific. This is a family show, and, and you're um, keeping that family profile right up there, and I thank you for that. Well, listen, my pleasure, dude. I, I'll tell you something. If I'm ever going to go traveling and stay at a hotel, I've got to stay at that top floor with Prince. It sounds like a blast. So you've told us in the last couple of weeks that he, he brings all his own furniture in. Yeah, he travels with right. his own furniture. He has it all fitted out like his own apartment. And, uh, and now he has a bunch of small furry animals delivered by people in black who look remarkably like Richard Gere. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know why, you know, the people who get me my stories, for some reason, they're just stuck on Prince every time. I don't know why. Yeah. A family show, yeah, like the Manson family show. That's what this person's starting to sound like. Thank you for doing that to us. I appreciate it, poor man. Bye-bye now. Okay. Hey, thanks, D Dougie. Yeah, 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 Dougie, yeah, it's cool. 7.25. Up in eyes. Thank you. Love, Bill. Hey, yes. Yes? Leonard Teal. He's unreal. Mind and y'all, time is 21 to 8 now. Forget Fiona McCallum. Forget dear Abby. Forget. Yeah. Never mind, she's dead anyway. Uh, Martha Gardner, that's it. Bum! I'm sorry. But, but, whatever you do, don't forget. Andrew Denton, yes! Ring 387 That number again, 387 And ask the man who's redefined the term Andrew to solve your problem and fix up your festering little life. Yes, once again, it's time to ask Andrew. My name's Andrew. I'm interested in philosophy. Uh, I'm just wondering about this society being the, the cause of the problems. Is there a philosophical basis for this, or is it purely a theological one? I don't know, maybe it's too intellectual, but I'd like to find out. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, Andrew, it is too intellectual. This is Triple M, remember. Nine to nine. Ah, uh, yes, g'day, Andrew. It's Carl here from Penrith. And I was wondering why the Earth spins on its axis and we don't all fall over to be dizzy. Thank you, this is Carl. Hope you can answer my question. Bye. Dear Carl, this is a very silly question. If you want me to answer something, ask me a question with some gravity. Andrew, hi, it's Kelly Dingwall here. I want to know how our Australian cricket team can get away with looking so unfit. I mean, look at the size of the gut on Merv Hughes and David Byrne. I mean, the guys, that really, it's a, a beast. It's disgusting. I just don't know how they get away with it. It really is. Thanks, bye. Dear Kelly, the truth is, the Australian cricket team only look unfit. In reality, they're all total body Nazis, dedicated to the highest pursuits of human health. It's just that some of them have insurmountable personal problems. David Boone, for instance, is actually Siamese twins, and both of them are in there somewhere, taking turns at being the one with his head out. And poor old Merv Hughes is really a very hairy pregnant woman, wearing a strapped-down maternity bra, but having trouble concealing the little one, now that the pregnancy is into its 15th big month. Please, Kelly. Try and be a bit more understanding next time. I'm Andrew Denton, and remember, no matter what's your problem, society's to blame. Good morning. Eighteen minutes to eight now. With ugly kid Joe here. The Ask Andrew number, by the way, three eight seven one zero double nine. Hey, remember that one? The old Harry Chapin song, Cats in the Cradle. Release 
by um, Ugly Dave Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic but Ugly Dave Gray. Take my wife, please. <laughs> Make me so long. I've heard that one before. It's uh, 14 minutes to 8. Ugly Kid, Ugly Joe. Kid Joe. My mistake. Yes. Ugly Kid Joe and uh, The Cure before that. On the other side of this break, it's Doug's all-new improved Big, Big Ring. Ring. Have you sent us a patch yet? Have you sent us a letter? 369-1626, our fax number, our postal address is GPO Box 4442, Sydney 2001. We've got thousands. Russell, them, dear. Let people see. Look, you, you hear that? Russell, Russell, Russell. <laughs> the lovely Russell. Um, we will uh, have Fifi dip on the other side of the break and we'll phone one of the numbers, one of the phone numbers sent to us. And, of course, the password today is... Thank you. Pavlov's staff. <laughs> Susie, you got some traffic before we go to the break? Yeah, Doug O's on. Well, Fifi. They're playing your song, my darling. Time to dip Russell, Russell, Russell. And dip, dip, dip. She's into that, uh... Oh, goodness me. I see someone's uh, misinterpreted Doug's big ring. They've written Doug's huge hoing on the side of the box. I'm sorry. Aluminium barrel carved from one single billet of aluminium by, by Latvian nuns. While on holiday. Yes. Uh, we're going to draw... But she's got it. She's out of the barrel. Would you like to dip one morning, Sam? Would you like to share the joy of being the barrel girl? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Have to get a bigger box. <laughs> oh, no. You see, people can be so unkind, can't they? Here we are. We have a, we have a winner. Uh, yep. And we, we'll, we'll dial okay. without mentioning the name because we, we want to surprise them. We want to make sure that they hit us with the, uh, the password. Let's not mention it again. Oh, okay. We've mentioned it many times. I don't think we'll mention it again. Let's see if we can get the right result from uh, this morning's winner in Doug's Big Ring. Assuming, of course, that, um, that she's there. Oh, I've given some of it away. It's a she. It's a she. Uh -huh. Phone's ringing for me and my gal. Wait for that password. <laughs> Doug Murray. Hello. Hello. Oh, you almost got the password. You see, you had to actually say Uga Chugga, Uga Chugga many, many times. Uga Chugga, Uga Chugga. I can't, I can't stop not believe I'm deep inside of me. Uh, Joanna. Yes. Joanna, what's this? Oh, Gear? I do not say my surname. Are you Joanna Gear? Yes, I am. Is that the uh, pronunciation? Um, It's actually Gurk. It's uh, German. Oh, Gerke, that's better. No, you don't want to be uh, Joanna Gear. I'll start asking you about small furry animals. <laughs> Joanna Gerke. Yeah. Joanna Gerke, yeah. as in Turkey. Good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Joanna. Yes. Beautiful Joanna. You're a thousand dollars richer. Oh, I'm so glad. You are. I do need it. Today's winner in Doug's Big Ring. Do you need the money? What do you need oh, the money for, my darling? Uh, bills, of course. Bills? More cages? Yeah. <laughs> 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 what sort of bills? Do you have really, you know, heavy bills? Maybe you've got a big telecom bill. That would be amusing, wouldn't it? Uh, credit cards, actually. Credit cards. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, one thousand dollars to pay off the credit cards. That's true. It's on its way to you. You stand by. Our people will be in touch with your people. Thank our, you very our much. Our answer phone will call your answer Thank phone. Thank you very much. Thank you for being there for me, my darling. Thank you. I appreciate. It. What if you gave a contest and nobody came? <laughs> Bye, Joanna. Bye. Joanna was nice, wasn't she? Yeah. I may well be in love with her, I think. Voices, they have an enormous impact on me. They do. Especially yours, Sam. <laughs> I hate it today. <laughs> and you're not the most attractive man no, I've ever seen. I'm one of the most unattractive men I've ever seen. You're giving me a real complex. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry. I won't do it anymore. I won't. No, I wouldn't... it's fine. I can take it. I wouldn't today hurt you. I can't take it. I know, because you're tired and emotional. Yes. I wouldn't hurt you for the world. I wouldn't. I'm not a hurtful person. I try not to be hurtful. I can sometimes say things, flippant things, in <laughs> an attempt to amuse the audience, which actually cause people pain. Flippant things like, you've got a new pair of underpants that you bought from the army surplus. <laughs> flippant, flippant things like that. Tent city, I believe. Tent city, yeah. 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 Cloudy periods with a few showers. <laughs> oh, I'm running for the weather. Cloudy periods with a few showers and moderate southwest to southerly wind. Top temperature expected 23 degrees in the city. Uh, in Liverpool and Richmond, 24. Today, a comprehensive check. <laughs> <laughs> How the weather follows the news or the drama behind the microphone. <laughs>
Two minutes. Heather Chapman will be ringing up to find out what's gone wrong between us. Two minutes to eight is the time, and uh, I believe Bob Geldof is coming in to uh, to talk to us and to play and sing after eight o'clock. Uh, we haven't seen him yet. Not as yet, no. I, I sort of, in many ways, I. I I kind of hope he doesn't turn up. I, while we're doing drama behind the microphone, I'm very intimidated. Yeah. I mean, here is a man who's done just about everything. Saved populations, fed the 5,000 like Jesus, has been made a knight. He's, he's made records and films and film clips. He's uh, articulate, intelligent, charming, hip, thunster. Are you turning? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just intimidated by all that talent. I, I don't know that I can cope. I might not have to. <laughs> Busy little program this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew Denton will be in the studio live to present Ask Andrew and to offer his views on some of life's more sticky social stigmas. I thought we might all ask a question we want answered. Oh, yeah, Let's ask Andrew a question uh, this morning. We'll have a party question, a Sammy question, a Lou the Junkyard Wog Dimovich question, Fifi can ask a question. We'll get through a bunch today. There are many things I'd like to ask Andrew. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Mike Carlton will be joining us from London. You remember Mike Carlton? Morning. I've got a head like a smacked dog. And we'll hunt down Fatty Vorton to talk about tonight's league opener between Canberra and St. George. And, of course, Switzers will join us shortly to cut through some of the confusion in our voting system. So, caring, sharing, poor, wonderful, rich and real. 6.06 is the time. In this week's No Idea, a special election special with all you need to know from A to GST. There's an eight-page look at Keating with special tips for those who've never Keated. Plus an eight-page look at Houston with special tips for those who've never Houston. The coalition leader at home with his family. Why the hell won't he stay there? Plus Paul Keating at home with his family. What the hell's he doing in Dr. Houston's house? Brooke Shield says no to Jacko romance rumours. She wouldn't bonk that bozo Aussie ruler if you paid her. And young girl relives dingo attack. That's twice she's been bitten. Stupid bint. Plus what L says about GST. Doesn't ghosts have an O in it? I've got no idea. Have you? Time is 11 after 6. 17 degrees in the city. It's crowded house. Now we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. In fact, uh, we're a quarter of an hour into the program and they said it wouldn't last. <laughs> crowded house with R-E-M. Before that, feels a little saner today, doesn't it? Kids, does it feel saner to you? It was off the planet yesterday. In fact, the program manager came into the studio uh, toward the end of the program and tried to put his hands through us. He wasn't quite <laughs> sure we were actually working in this dimension. Well, you've had experience with ghosts. Do -do 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 -do. I didn't talk about it before the program. I have no intention of talking about it after the program. Boom! I did enjoy the show. <laughs> Ooh, isn't he scared? Sorry. I did enjoy the show. I, uh, I thought it was good. I hadn't seen the first episode. Mm. Uh, I think it debuted a week ago at number one in every state in Australia. People are certainly interested in that sort of thing. I doubt very much it'll do as well this week, though, because apart from the fact that it's up against Northern Exposure, the soccer was on last night. Mm. And what else was on? Oh, of course, Elton John uh, gigging for um, the AIDS research thing. Mind you, I don't know whether he'd be helped by Daryl and Ozzy. But I'd much rather watch a, um, a man in a bar, like that man in a bar, no, that sounds awful, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> the man underwater pushing the train, and the yeah. woman with the bleeding hands, and then that strange ghost-like man with the long wispy hair. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, we'll see, I guess, what people prefer when the, when the ratings come out. It was, I thought it was a good program. I think that sort of thing definitely captures people's imagination. When you have an individual, um, you have a person fraught with all sorts of fears. Australians are afraid of all sorts of things. Sharks. Kilos. <laughs> no, 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 I won't do that sort of thing because we're not Murder. doing... No, 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 we're not doing... We're not doing fat jokes. So what I wanted to do at this time instead... Well, look, don't change for me. Don't change your hair Just for me. Just because I was upset yesterday, you may continue. No, 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 I won't. Because what I wanted to do was thank somebody who's uh, written me a lovely letter, sent in some T-shirts. We did uh, the gig. Well, we almost did the gig yesterday with Bob <laughs> Geldof. And uh, we mentioned that the guitar that I provided for him was my Martin, you see. And Martin guitars, or at least the distributor of Martin guitars, Jackson's Rare Guitars. Um, heard the plug and, and thought um, that they would send in some T-shirts. They sent some great T-shirts in with things like uh, Tune It or Die. 
on them. <laughs> <laughs> and they wrote this little letter, and I, I just wanted to read it out. It's very nice. Uncle Doug, I heard Bob Geldof using your Martin this morning. Here's some Martin products to clean it up. Oh, yes, some guitar cleaning spray, some T-shirts uh, for your guys, uh, the small ones for the twins. We are the sole distributors of Martin for Sydney, so if we can be of any assistance, please call. One thing, though, it's a bit rough. I want you to hear this. It's a bit rough, ungentlemanly, in fact, to be hard on Sammy regarding her weight. Bad form, Doug. Regards, Mark Ryan. P.S. The extra large T-shirt is for Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, we, I just want to celebrate another day of living. Uh, the political posturing of the past month comes to a head tomorrow. Or to put it another way, it comes to an end tomorrow, and I think that's for the best. When Australians head for the ballot box, they're going to uh, vote for a new government. It will be a new government. Whether or not the Labor Party uh, is returned, it will obviously change in composition here to help us cut through some of the confusion surrounding voting and the voting system is our economic and social commentator, Peter Goofy Schwitzer. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since I've heard that one. I know, I just thought I'd put you off guard. Uh, Are you well? Uh, well, I was until that last comment, I must admit. I'm sorry. But um, I'll forgive you. Well, you know how we deal with everybody. Yeah. Um, Sam was here, but she's gone now. In fact, so we needed somebody else doing so. Yeah. In fact, I've been saying to Sammy, it's really nice that Doug's been getting stuck into you because he's leaving you know, me alone for starters. Yeah, but I'm not. I, okay. I've turned the spotlight back on you again. Now, we're talking about voting and, and the actual process of voting. Mm. How easy is it um, to vote for Leonard Teal? Well, if you are... Because he's unreal. That's right. Well, if you're totally putting your trust in Leonard, all you have to do is to get the Senate's sheet, which would be an enormously long, snake-like sheet. Frightening, in fact. Right. Uh, and there's a line, a big black line in the middle of it, and above the line, you can just put one single number in the Leonard Teal box. Mm -hmm. And that means that you're trusting in Leonard's preferences all the way through, so one number does it. But we don't, of course, know what Leonard will be doing with his preferences, unless, of course, Len's there at your bowl, uh, polling booth with uh, uh, a little diagrammatic piece explaining those preferences. Well, in actual, in actual fact, I think every polling booth or polling place will have an explanation of those preferences. If, if you ask somebody, they actually will show you who those parties are and who they've been um, sent out to. So if you look at those preferences and you're a bit concerned mm. about where Leonard may be allocating some of his, you can still mark Leonard below the line and then you have to number all the other boxes. Well, that's it. Say, for example, if you're a, a Labor Party or Liberal Party devotee, but Leonard Teal is still far more important to you than them. That's where it really becomes tricky. Mm. You have to vote for Leonard's box first, and I think he's in with a bloke called Colin Ward, who's not a household name. <laughs> oh, fine. So hard to concentrate when parties hawking outside the studio. <laughs> if one's going to hawk party, one closes the studio door. There's a good fellow. <laughs> still to come in the <coughs> still to come in the show. These wonderful segments. Ask Andrew, share Sydney with a friend, and Doug's big ring. We'll give you the. Uh, the password early today. Uh, today's password in Doug's big ring, there are no gays in the American army. Well, golly! <laughs> and of course, um, we have those popular personalities for you too, Mike Carlton and Madame Zender. There's a lovely couple, and so compatible. Madame Zender sees the future, and Mike Carlton forgets the past. <laughs> 24 minutes to 7 the time, 15 degrees in the back Here's the clash for you. Possibly even North Coco Infant School. That's how far it goes back. Get ladies song and out then. <laughs> An old joke, but it just might work. Oh. Hello, Triple M. Oh, is that you, Doug? It most certainly is. Oh, hello, Doug. Uh, this is your good friend, Lars. Bum, bum, Chris, yes, thank yes. you. Calling you live on the telephone all the way from... Malmo. Malmo, it's me. Yes. Lars Bumquist, you old Scandinavian sex god, you. How the devil are you? Oh, dog, I am splendid. Now, Lars, if I were to define your level of splendidness, yep. if I may use that term, it's early, if I were to define your level of splendidness by using one of those little sayings you love so much, would you say you were as happy as a herring in brine? Uh, no, Doug, I am uh, happier than that. Yeah, good. Uh, would you say you were as happy as a roll mop in a bowl of vodka? Uh, no, Doug, I am happier than that. Uh. Or as we say here in the greater 
Melmo. Melmo Trelleborg District. I am as happy as a polar bear with a big stiffy. <laughs> see, it's a new one, you see. I thought I'd learned them all. I was trying my little catalog there, but, but now I'm, uh, I'm enlightened. As happy as a polar bear with a big stiffy. That's correct. Yeah, and last old friend, old pal of mine, might I ask why you're as happy as the aforementioned polar bear with the aforementioned member? Well, because I have just returned from a few days vacationing uh, up inside the Arctic Circle, mm. and the polar bear that chased me for three kilometers yesterday didn't have a big stiffy. Yeah, bye, Lars. We'll never get know. How happy are you, Sam? It's... Never mind. Okay. What? 18 to 7. In excess, my very good friends in excess. I thought it might be you. That's why I put on your special answer. Normally, I only give you that off the air to make you <laughs> smile and wriggle. Uh, but today, I thought I'd share it with the audience. Rega, Rega Ellis, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. We had the clash. We had in excess. And now we have Rega Ellis. Three star turns in a row. <laughs> 14 minutes to seven. It's not a particularly nice day. He's over. Gust. Very over gust down here on the beach. Do we have surf to go with it? Uh, we've got met the onshore conditions. I'm here at Bondi. It doesn't seem good at all. You're at Bondi? I'm at Bondi. That probably means you'll be up for a free cup of coffee in that's, moments. That's right. <laughs> we know the routine. Can you bring some food? If you were at Bondi, was it because you wanted to report on the central beaches, the city beaches for yep. the folks, or is it because you found somebody who lives in this region and stayed with them last night? No, no, no. I uh, <laughs> Methinks he doth protest too much. No, no I did not. Just, no, 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 because, I mean, one physical reality with which uh, no one would disagree is that the central beaches are so much closer to Oxford Street than <laughs> Queenscliff. <laughs> Reagan, you didn't leave in high dudgeon after my earlier offensive remarks? No, no, no. You retained your sense of humor and managed to smile all the while? Always. I'm glad to hear that. I like it when people do that. I said some things the other day about David Leckie, the boss of the Nine Network, and I believe he's seeking legal advice. You have got fit. When I called him a... Peanut. Yeah. Oh, he's a bit of a stook, isn't he? No, don't, don't say that. Oh, no good, back. He'll be in trouble, too. I thought it was all right in Australia to call somebody a penis as long as you didn't call them a small penis. Mm. I could be wrong. We'll see what uh, ramifications there are. Yes. Could be the old whoopee cushion we put under him at the meeting that day. Do you remember? Uh, we, uh, we went in there and had a little board meeting, and uh, he stood up and made a speech about how wonderful it was that Molo Productions Proprietary Limited and Channel 9 were in league together or would be in league together, and when he sat down, we'd put a whoopee cushion under him. It just was, ah, it was just not something he was used to. You see, Packer never did it to him. No. <laughs> Executives from other networks never did it to him. Major clients never did it to him. But that's the way we like to do business here at Mulray Productions, Proprietary Limited. Yes, Thurston? You know, love, you could have been much worse than calling him a, what was that word, Samantha? That's it. You could have called him a receiver. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a term to bandy with. Yeah. Nine minutes to seven, right? Right. Right, and we're standing by to hear what awful news you have for Sydney surface. Okay, we've well, got <laughs> Mind you, I have heard other people call him that. <laughs> and let's see what's poo-pooed on the road this morning. Uh, Sue Moses standing by. Slim FM 105. Just an excitable girl, ladies and gentlemen. And so's Alison. 705 coming up soon. We'll share Sydney with a friend. Coming up soon, Mike Carlson. Morning, Daddy. Lots of news in London today. Eh? Ellis, yes, I know we've already done the surf report. I mean, he's uh, he's coming up soon in the lift with our sausage McMuffins and hash browns. Yay! Yeah, please. It better be real soon. Sam's got that look in her eye. Dead pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Woman could eat a baby's bum through a cane chair. I like kids, so I couldn't eat the whole one. <laughs> 706 now. Yes, I know. Have you seen the Muffin Man? The McMuffin Man? The McMuffin Man. The McMuffin Man being reggae this morning. He's uh, gone to McDonald's to buy breakfast for my ravenous crew. Six sausage and egg McMuffins. I don't know what you're having. <laughs> Ten past seven is the time. Time once again to do Share Sydney with a Friend. Thanks to our very good friends Thomas Cook Travel. But before we go to today's winner, I thought we might reintroduce a winner of uh, this week, earlier this week. Her name, you'll remember, I'm sure, Dawn Smith. Good morning, Dawn. Hi, how are you? Dawn Smith of Harbour. Do you remember 
We uh, made it possible for Dawn's mum to come out to attend the birth of her first child. Well, I don't think mum's going to make it, is she, Dawn? No, I don't think so. What's <laughs> happened to you, my darling? You tell the folks what's happened to you. I think I've gone into labour. <laughs> what do you mean you think you've got? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Something, something very strange is happening to me. Yes. It started late last night, well, about two o'clock this morning. Yeah. And I've tossed and I've turned and I've, I think I'm starting to get the contractions. Are you bearing down, darling? The waters are starting to go. Oh, are they? Mm. What yeah. even as we speak? Justin's running around with a snorkel on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that wonderful little scarce turn of phrase, isn't it? <laughs> Some people call it vulgar. So, so your waters have gone, and you're uh, you're getting the contractions. How regularly are they coming, my dear? Oh, half an hour. Half an hour. You've got a while to wait. No, no, no. You won't have to. Uh, this time tomorrow, tonight. You won't have to camp outside the hospital on that basis, my dear. <laughs> I don't think I don't think your mum. I don't think Beryl's going to make it in time for the birth, is she? No, she's not. I don't think so at all. She seemed very excited about the idea of coming out, though. Oh, she thought it was lovely. Lovely. Well, yes, yeah, she kept saying it was lovely. Lovely, 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 lovely. <laughs> well, um, maybe. Would you like? Uh, um, would you like uh, me to come and video the birth so she could no, see it? No, no, you would video camera. Oh, I see. That. Suddenly the hubby burst in. It's amazing. He was there in the cupboard all the time. Uh, some men are like that. Well, it sounds like uh, your happiness is imminent, and uh, and we congratulate you in anticipation. We've got to say thanks. Thank you. Oh. To Thomas Cook Travel and um, Triple M. Oh, it's our pleasure. We like doing this kind oh, of stuff. Making my wife go off the Richter. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is, what are you hoping for, a boy or a girl? Girl. A little oh, girl. Boy. A boy. Isn't that funny? That's the uh, role reversal that nobody ever expects. I found uh, when Lizzie was pregnant, everybody that said to me, I bet you're hoping for a boy, was a woman. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's not, I, mean, I think men are largely indifferent, but women seem to think it's a good idea that one has a son. <laughs> uh, I hope you have a healthy one, whatever it is, guys. Sure thanks a lot, Doug. Keep us posted. Oh, sure, yeah, most definitely. And thanks again for all your help. Thanks for getting me mum over. We couldn't keep chatting. I was hoping to chat until we had you scream with pain, but it just hasn't come out. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Is that pain or is that excitement? Yeah, excitement. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, after this break, we'll uh, do it for somebody else in Share Sydney with a friend. Very strange Scottish protest to super glued himself to the gates of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> and may well die of boredom any moment. Uh, well, dun -dun 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 -dun. are you actually employed there? I thought you were just a guest on the program. Oh, just a guest, no, but I'm doing an editorial thing, yeah. Uh -huh. So um, I'll be anxious to hear about this interview um, to see if David still has it, David Stroke Michael Frost still has it, whether or not uh, he's been affected by all that Black Douglas over the years. All the Black Douglas. <laughs> he looks a bit wobbly to ask it. Yeah. I shall put it to him. Okay. Thank you for your time this morning, Michael. Lovely to talk to you, man. Have a good weekend. I certainly do have a good weekend. I hope we all have a good weekend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Carlton, our very good friend Michael Carlton, for the comm store, purveyors of mobile telephones to the stars. Well, to party part, though, anyway. Parties bought a mobile phone, my dears. Which is rather a tragedy, as he has absolutely no one who wants to talk to him. Never rings. Parties on the phone for you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I said, party's on the phone for you, Doug. Oh, damn, I was pretending I wasn't here. <laughs> 7.27, the time right now. Our next major feature, ladies and gentlemen, is Triple M News and Nympho. Triple M News and Information. Uh, brought to you by, well, the resources of every other major media outlet in Australia we can get our hands on. They're in there combing the papers and monitoring other stations. It's, oh, oh, I can see rude gestures. Even... Oh, even Mark Warren is, is taking sides with the newsroom. Oh, they're all doing they are. They're all, I think they're all saying we're number one. They're pointing at the <laughs> leaking roof. They're pointing at the leaking roof. Is that what it yeah. is? Yes. Pillowhead, Big Al, Weird Al Drower will be in next. Or maybe she won't. Depends. High dungeon is the condition I would describe her as being in at the moment, my dear. <laughs> the drama behind the microphone. Oh, okay. Right now in town, it's 14 degrees as the Mulray Bunch warm up for their best of show. Starting off, as usual, with Lou the Junkyard Wog's Week in Review. It must have been a long weekend. We yeah. had a kiddie weekend, didn't yes, we? Yes, they say some funny things when they're around three, don't they? They do. So. Like, get this drunk out of my house and get a puppy, <laughs> like, proper peepee pee puppy. Yeah, Rubbish no, baby buggy bumpers. The fat joke returned. From 1987, and why can't I be you? Why can't I be you, Sam? Well, I don't have the foundation garments for it. The poor man lamented Liz and Larry's love. Apparently her marriage to Larry is going very well, that they are a real marriage. However... She has a huge appetite for sex, not that that's bad or anything, but according to the sources, a huge appetite for sex, not in the conventional location. 
Oh, she likes to do it on the beach? <laughs> you know what I mean, man. Sure I do. She's Greek, right? Our camera guru, John Hewitt, was booing the $5,000 bureaucratic boredom bonus. That's one of the things I thought it was a bit rich about the police getting 5000 and us not. It was that uh, in the wintertime, they're not here, basically. They don't come here in the wintertime, so... Uh, but you're there, aren't you, John? Yes. <laughs> a pregnant dawn on a dug for choosing her to share Sydney with a mum. We've decided. We're going to name the episiotomy after you. You're going to name the episiotomy after Oh, I once was there for an episiotomy. I've heard the scissors cutting human flesh, and I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather you didn't. The perineum is a thing I would rather see undisturbed. Oh, Barry was boisterous and... Unbelievable! Sam was getting ready for the dentist. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I know that you're having trouble with your toothy pegs. But that's Sorry. really unnecessary. Sorry. Sam has a major hole, ladies and gentlemen, in her tooth. And she's going to have a drill today. And oh, it's like so, this. so awful. And we've just been putting a few effects together. <laughs> <laughs>